Oh, Captain, my Captain. Captain, urgent news from the General. Why not really blow it up, Captain? Captain Blob, embarking into hostile and fire. I'm getting her off, she's fine, Captain. My Captain. No, Captain, they're alive. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel. This is your Captain speaking, and thank you for watching. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at the unmatched sets. We're going to rank all 18 of them by the in-the-box experience. Um, I just did the one for value. Let's go check that out. It's pretty long. You can fast forward to the very end to see the, the actual finished ranking if you want. Uh, but we're going to look at the in-the-box experience. So if you just own that set, what experience will you get? That's what we'll be doing. First off, I want to think. First off, I'd like to thank my crockpots. Uh, we have Bromantic, Greg's Vlasinski, 619 Sports, Chick Charney, O Town, and Shy Guy for Smash. A huge shout out and thanks to them for supporting me. And uh, if you'd like to, you can go to patreon.com slash Captain Crockpot to become a crockpot today. Now, getting right into it. Going to try to make this one a little faster than the last one. The last one was about an hour. We're going to shoot for around 30 minutes. I think we can do it. So, jumping straight into it, guys. So, the in-the-box experience. First thing, again, I'm going to say this each video. If you know, if there's an IP or a character that connects to you, that calls to you, um, that is your favorite for whatever reason, buy that set. You will enjoy it. So if that's Buffy, if that's King Arthur, if that is um, Invisible Man, like whatever the set is, whatever the character is that you just have, like, man, you've read their books, you've seen the movies, you've, you just, you love that one character, buy that set and you will have an incredible time, no matter what, guaranteed. Beyond that, there are many, many, many factors to look at to figure out which set is for you. And I'm gonna be making all these tier lists to help you understand that you're gonna be watching the one that you that is that is geared towards you. So if you, you there's gonna be like 12 to look at look at, right? And you're gonna be like, oh, that's the one that I care about the most, which is in this one, the in the box experience. So you may plan on only owning one set or maybe two sets. You don't really want to get the whole thing, um, or at least you don't want to yet. You may end up getting there at some point but you're just starting out. So what's that in the box experience? What's the most fun? That's what we're doing. F is gonna be the worst, S will be the best. And the very bottom in the box experience is going to be Bruce Lee. Why is it Bruce Lee? Because you cannot play the game if you just have Bruce Lee. You, will, you just have one fighter. He is a fun fighter. He is very fun. It's very enjoyable. It's great, like all the components, everything's great about it, but you don't have a map, you don't have another fighter. You can't play the game. That's why he's F, it's very simple. Uh, also right now, he's he is very expensive. The next one, same problem, and that's Deadpool. I put Deadpool higher because in the box, uh, I enjoy Deadpool more. He's He is more enjoyable, more fun. Uh, it's more interesting and unique. It's a, it's a fun experience when you open that box and you're reading the, the rules and you're reading his cards and you're looking at every single card. You have 30 different cards and that's just a really fun um, experience getting into that that set. Uh, but again, there's no map. There's no second fighter, so you can't play the game. Even if you bought these two fighters together, you still could not play the game technically. You could put them together and just play in a phone booth basically, um, but you would need uh, a set with a map. So those are our F-tiered fighters. The next set in the box experience is going to be one of my favorite sets, um, which is Jurassic Park, T-Rex, and Dr. Sattler. This is D because uh, it is very skewed. Um, as you play this set more and more and more and more and more, you're going to find out that uh, one of the fighters will just destroy the other fighter, and it is not as much fun. Um, the The mini is incredible, so that could I mean that that might bump it up just by itself. 
that mini is so good. It's a gigantic, it's, it introduces large fighters, and the T-Rex is super fun. Um, the artwork, everything about it is really fun, but in the in the set, it's, I'm going to leave it at D. We're going to leave it at D because all the other ones are pretty balanced within their box. Um, and this one, let's just say that you could win with the monitor off. Uh, that is a thing. Um, next set we have is the Legends. Battle of Legends Volume 1. Medusa... King Arthur, Alice, and Sinbad. In the box, um, I will say this. I have not played this one in the box very often, if if at all. Um, I don't play King Arthur. I don't play as Alice. Um, my friends play as Alice. Um, I've played a, a good amount of Sinbad. I've played a lot as Medusa. Um... In the box, Medusa, in, for, my, for my money, Medusa should destroy King Arthur. Medusa should destroy Alice. And Medusa should destroy Sinbad. If you have a fighter that destroys all the other fighters, that's not a very great experience. But I've not played it very much. I can't be the, the judge on that fully. So if you've played that set a lot, guys, let me know what the experience is like. I think the problem is that a lot of people have had this as their first experience. They've, they've played this set, and they've found out the hard way, and then they just gave up on Unmatched, and that's what we don't want. We don't want people getting this set and then being disappointed with the experience and then giving up on the, an incredible game. So uh, this set's awesome to have. I just had it as it was uh, in the S tier for best value because it comes with two maps and four fighters, but in the box by itself not the best experience the next set is buffy and this is gonna be the the highest set in c tier i have not played this set within the set ever so just want you to know that i've not played buffy the buffy set really at all very much they are not competitively viable and that's almost exclusively how i play the game now um, I do play these these fighters. Uh, you might see it on stream sometimes. Um, we'll play against Greg's and Holy, and he'll he'll give me Buffy to play as, and he'll be Medusa or whatever. Right? Like, it will happen. But um, I don't know. I don't I don't know the the show. I don't know. Uh, I don't know really the fighters. I don't play as Angel. I don't play as Spike. I have played as Willow um, a couple or a few times, actually. Yeah, probably three or four times I've played as Willow. I enjoy those games. They're not terrible. Um, I've played as Buffy more. Uh, I do enjoy my Buffy games a lot. Um, and then the other two fighters I just have not played as. Uh, I've, I have played against Spike. Spike is, is fun in 2v2. By the way, this is we're mostly talking about 1v1 experiences, but um, Spike is... Uh, he is enjoyable... In the 2v2 experience, for sure, um, I've seen it and I've been against it, and it was cool. It was cool to see it. Uh, it's actually he was actually viable, so that was that was neat. Um, but I don't know the show, don't know the set, so I can't really say. You guys can let me know if that is a bad spot for it. But in the box experience, I'm putting that as C, and that will be the highest in C tier. Going into B tier, we have. By the way, we are making great time. I just want to say that we are making incredible time. It's only been 10 minutes. Uh, we have Teen Spirit. Teen Spirit um, is it's a tricky it's a tricky one. So the fighters are not great outside the box. We're talking in the box. In the box, I don't know how Squirrel Girl does. Cloak and Dagger. When we played our games, I've not played against really anybody except for. O Town and maybe probably Greg's. Uh, when I was Cloak and Dagger and, and they were Squirrel Girl, we played a, a handful of games and it felt like all I had to do was go in with Cloak and attack a squirrel. Like that was it. <laughs> Just go in with Cloak, attack a squirrel, and then and then she couldn't do anything. Um, I don't know if that 
if that's accurate. I haven't played against like a really good Squirrel Girl player, Squirrel Girl main or something, but um, it wasn't a great experience. Uh, I love Cloak and Dagger, I love Miss Marvel, and I love the map. Uh, but Squirrel Girl for me brought it down. Um, the boost value is also super low, so that is why this set is at the bottom of B tier. Uh, when the set came out, I really loved it, but as I played it more and more and more, it just sort of fell off because of the competitive viability um, and just some other little little holes with it. Um, Squirrel Girl feels like homework too. That's another reason why she's down here. She feels like homework where you have to move all these fighters and do all this stuff. Um, the idea of having all these fighters is really cool, except practically it's like, okay, I got to do this and this and move all my... If you really love like that fiddliness of having to move everything, get this set because you're going to love Squirrel Girl. My, my uh, nephew, he loves this. He loves Squirrel Girl because he wants me to be Deadpool pretty much every game. He has me be Deadpool because I have 10 health and he can usually, he can win uh, if we, if, I, if I'm Deadpool and he's, you know, whoever, T-Rex or whatever. So, but he likes to be Squirrel Girl because she has so many fighters and so like it's just every turn you're creating a squirrel and he just had this massive army and it just feels so good um so if you love that get this set it'll be great for you next set in the box experience cobble and fog i can't really remember i can't remember at this point now really playing too many i've played a lot of, of this set but I don't remember the games very well. Um, I hear now that it's like that Sherlock just stomps everybody and it's not fun. And, and that's probably what would happen if you played Sherlock the way that we do in competitive. When I played this set, I was not in competitive. So it was very fun. It, it was a super fun set. Uh, and everybody, anybody could win any time. So um, once you start getting into more of the competitive scene, it it changes the way this, this is viewed. If you're just buying one set and you're new to the game, this is a great set to get. You have four fighters and two maps and um, just the theming in the box. Everything is just so rich. Uh, you feel like you're the Invisible Man. You feel like you're Dr. Jekyll. You feel like you're Dracula and you feel like you're Sherlock. So, yep. And it's just a great set, incredible set. And um, next up, we have Robin Hood and Bigfoot. So Robin Hood Bigfoot in the box, it, it, it feels very balanced, like super balanced, um, which is really interesting because of who the fires are um, and where they fall in the competitive uh, ranking. But it's a, it just feels really good. Um, the two maps, you have two maps again, and it, and it just really works. You've got Yukon for Bigfoot, you've got uh, Sherwood for Robin Hood, and you have uh, one fighter with just a, with a sidekick that has um, you know six health and the jackalope, and then you have Robin Hood who has the four uh, sidekicks with no like just one HP. There's just a really really it's very versatile. Okay, if you want to play range, you go him. If you want to have multiple sidekicks, you go him. If you want to play you know big heavy hitter melee, go Bigfoot. If you want to play, so it's like if you both want to do the same thing, you can just take turns. Um, there's something for everybody in that set, and um, and it just it's very balanced, so it's a, it's a fun experience. Uh, next up, we've got Redemption Row, and so this is another three fighter one map uh, set, and it's very well balanced with all three fighters. If you do a lot of like three player games. Which I don't recommend. Um, I've, I've played a handful of three-player games, and they are never, ever as fun as four-player or as two-player. Um, if you're playing three-player, I would, I would always recommend doing a tournament if you have the time. Do a tournament and just do each player plays each person once. So um, that's how I would always play three player. I would never, I would not do three player at the same time unless you can only get one game in, then go for it. Um, but this is a balanced set. I hate Ghost Rider, and that's why it's at the top of B tier. Um, I hate Ghost Rider. I loved Moon Knight. 
I still... I think I love Moon Knight. I don't know. I haven't played Moon Knight in so long. Um, and then Luke Cage is really fun. Uh, and, I, and I really enjoy Luke Cage. Uh, yeah, it's a great set. Great set. Top of B. Moving into A tier. We have Brains and Brawn. This set is, let's think about it, in the box experience. In the box experience, yeah, it works. It just, it really does work. Uh, surprisingly, it works. Um, Spider-Man has no feints. So you would think it may not work, but he hits so hard. So it's, you really, he can, he can beat Doctor Strange with his big hits. You just can't, don't get them missed, um, and then don't get them, uh, you basically, actually, it's funny, because as Spider-Man, to beat Strange, always attack him with something you don't want to hit him with. That's pretty much it. Attack him with a bad attack. If he makes it, you know, blank... And you're good, because he's going to make it blank, and then he's going to take a damage to put that on the bottom of his deck. And then if he misses it, great. You discard it, and then maybe you hit him with a six for four damage. So, and then he's, and then if he wants to recur that miss, then he's got to take a damage. So it'll be five damage. So, uh, but if you ever attack with that six, you got, you know, five cards that he could use to stop it pretty easily. Um, it works. Uh, She-Hulk, really fun. To play as specifically, Doctor Strange really fun to play as specifically, and then uh, the map is just really really good. It's a three, it's a move three centered map, and it works well for range. It works well for melee, um, and the, and this was a set that made a melee move two fighter work. So hats off to Resto for pulling that off because a a, a a move two solo fighter melee work. Um, not everybody loves a set, though. That's for sure. Uh, I enjoy it, but not everybody does. We have Jurassic Park, Raptors versus InGen, uh, and their map is is the Raptor Paddock. This set is just really fun. I love InGen. Uh, one of my favorites. Um, again, not everybody loves InGen. They put traps down, and people can find that really annoying. Um, but it's it's the theming in this set. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, I had jerk chicken for dinner, and I almost just brought up the jerk chicken for you guys. Um, the theming in this set is so good. Uh, between, if, if you love the movies, this is an incredible set, but the, the names of the cards, the artwork on the cards, the minis themselves, the, the workers and the traps... The raptor paddock, the way it's laid out with the pit, really fun. It's a really fun puzzle to, to work out. It's fun to be the raptors, and it's fun to be in gen. Uh, I found it more fun to be in gen because as the raptors, you sort of feel like you have to come in to kill. And as in gen, you can just sit back and wait and let them do it. So um, I found it more fun as the raptors, or as, the, as in gen. A lot of people find it more fun as, as, as the raptors because... They like to be attacking and like picking off the little guys and then like, you know, repositioning and then gaining actions and going, 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 going. Um, in the set, it works really well and it's, it is balanced. Next up, we have Hell's Kitchen. Hell's Kitchen is a mystery of a set because it works in the box and all three fighters are so polarizing. Um, I don't know how, this is when, this is like, so Resto is really good besides like, really just besides, I think the Jurassic Park one at the bottom, the T-Rex one, they, it's like they test for everything. So they really figure out, um, they figure out, you know, how can we make three unique fighters that are interesting, but a really, they're always making the sets for the in-game experience. They're not creating the sets for competitive players necessarily. Um, they are definitely factoring that in more now, uh, but when they, when they make their sets, they're making it for the in-the-box experience 
And if it works really well with everything else, that's awesome. It's a bonus. So in this set, they pulled it off uh, because Bullseye, you know, is this ranged auto attacking monster. Um, not auto attacking. He's a ranged uh, attack from anywhere, you know, menace. And Daredevil is this fatigue nightmare. And Electra is a fatigue nightmare, but or she could do this, you know, or she could go really aggro, um, and it just really works. And the map is awesome. Hell's Kitchen is one of my favorite maps. Um, yeah, it really works in the box. It, it is also another polarizing set. Some people hate the map. Some people, most people hate Electra, and then a lot of people hate Daredevil. So, if you are buying this set to play with other sets you might see more of a, um, a drop off in your enjoyment. If you're just playing it within the box, it's a great set. We're getting way up there, guys. These are all really good. Everything, by the way, guys, all the sets are incredible. Get all the sets, they're awesome. Um, Little Red and Beowulf, this set for me was like, it was so cool because the artwork was awesome um really just like i don't know how, i don't know just like was... I, just, I just remember opening this this setup and just being super excited about it because like the artwork and the just the theming of it really worked and um i don't love the doors very much um but everything else outweighed that for me and the doors are still interesting to play around it's, a, it's an interesting mechanic to play around. Um, the map is a good map, but the fighters are just, I love the fighters. Beowulf and Little Red are both some of my favorite, favorite fighters. Uh, so this in the box experience, it's super balanced. Their cards really go well together and either one of them can win. The, the, what, the experience you really want is just like, if it's a two fighter set, you want 50-50. And if it's a three fighter set, you want 33-33-33, right? You want those as the win percentages. Four fighter, 25, 25, 25, 25. So you want that even, like anybody can win, anybody can win. And this set really brings that. And the last one for our A tier is gonna be King and Country. Um, this set could easily be an S. It could easily, easily be the top of S. Um, it all depends on what you, what you think. And I might have to drop it down because so I love this set, guys. This is one of my favorite sets. It might be my favorite set. It's way up there for me. Um, I love Black Panther, I love Black Widow, and I love Winter Soldier. Playing as all of these fighters is incredible and super, super fun. Uh, playing against these fighters is not as much fun. But playing as them is awesome. And the map is great. Helicarrier is, um, it gives you a lot of different, a lot of new things. Uh, you got some movement tokens, you got some, uh, you get the discard, and you have uh, just this auto damage token. It's fun to play. I love token maps, really do. A lot of people don't. They think it changes the game in a negative way, um, and they just want to play unmatched. And I'm like, well, this you're playing unmatched, but you're just adding more strategy and decision making to it, which is a good thing. Um, Black Widow is very, no one really hates playing as Black Widow. She's, she's balanced. She is fun. She's very creative. She creates her own little mini game that's different than everybody else. She has 31 cards. There's an extra card that you start with. Uh, she has this mission mechanic. It's really great. Black Panther takes your cards, like takes your opponent's cards and puts them into his thing and he can use them. That's awesome. It's so fun to play as. Not as much fun when you get your cards taken. Definitely not. But he's not strong, so like you can easily beat him. And so in that way, it's not terrible. Winter Soldier can go infinite and you can't really stop it. So there, in the games when he goes infinite and wins, you, you probably had a, a frustrating time. And then in the games when you won, you had a great time and you probably enjoyed it because you, you like earned it. If, if you like that set, if that sounds good to you, get that set. Um, if it sounds like a nightmare, don't get that set. Hold off on that set. Wait till you get you know other sets, and then come back to that set. All right, we got our our final four. Our final four are 
Sun's Origin, Tales to Amaze, uh, Battle of Legends Volume 2, and Genie Houdini. These are all incredible sets, and no one would fault me for putting any of these anywhere in the top S tier. I can assure you. In the box experience, it's always changing, but we're putting Houdini here. This used to be the, the best experience, um, and it might still... I haven't played it in the box in a very long time because these other sets have come out, and, and so I've not come back to it. But this set is very, very fun to play in the box. You've got two super, super aggro fighters, and the map is an aggro map. So it is action-packed the whole game, the whole way through, and because of that, it is super, super fun. And actually, because of that, I'm going to bump it above the one that was next, which was super, super fun as well. So we're going to put Sun's Origin right behind it because I do think I do think Houdini Genie in the box is an inc was an incredible experience because they hadn't pulled it off yet. They hadn't pulled off. As you can see, every other set is like you got one aggro, one fatigue, one, you know, whatever, mix. Um or some unique fighter. And to, to pull off two aggro fighters in the same set and have it feel good and balanced and just be like super explosive was was really well done by them. So yeah, we're gonna put Houdini Genie above that. Behind that, we'll put Sun's Origin. This is the most recent set that we got and it is so good. Oh, I'm gonna convince myself to put it above. Sun's Origin is so good, guys. Um, if you, if like the Japanese culture and like samurai and all that, if that like touches a note with you, then move this above Houdini Genie, okay? Um, if you care about the theme, move it above Houdini Genie for sure. Uh, Tomoe and Oda playing on Azuchi Castle and it is a really good experience because what's weird is Tomoe is really, really good. And she's really, really good against heroes specifically. Well, Oda's strength are his sidekicks, his two six health sidekicks. So it, it's like this, it's, it's this weird clash where Oda is like, if he goes, yeah, I want to play it again. I haven't played with Oton in a while. We've both gotten better at, at Tomoe for sure. So I wonder how that would go. Um, but yeah, it's a great experience, guys. And Azuchi Castle is an awesome map. The card art, everything about the set is really incredible. So, yeah, it's a great set. I, I, I'm happy with it there. I will leave it behind Houdini Genie. Um, and the last two, in second place, we're going to put Battle of Legends Volume 2, which will mean that Tales of to Amaze is number one. So, Battle of Legends Volume 2 in the box is three top top tier fighters one mid tier fighter that's super fun and a map that is awesome uh hanging gardens it gives you high ground which gives you a plus one on your attacks if you are adjacent to the person and you're on high ground when you attack them uh, and then the this set introduced double attacks so you can get two attacks when you're attacking your opponent the whole thing, guys, this whole set is is super, super fun. And um, there was a whole tournament actually just around this set, which was interesting. They had the Battle of Legends. I forget what they called it, but the Battle of Legends Volume 2. There was a whole tournament about it. And uh, you got Wukong, Yanenga, Achilles, and, and um, Bloody Mary. I initially, like, I think initially Wukong was my favorite. From this set, and then it became Yanenga, and then it was Bloody Mary, and now it's probably Achilles, or Bloody Mary. Uh, as far as favorite, favorite would probably be Bloody Mary still, but I play Achilles all the time. And I really love the games with him. Uh, Wukong is super fun. He's super tricksy, and then Yanenga is just super strong and she's balanced, and she. It's just it's a really good set, guys. Um, in the box. It, it, there's something for everybody in this set for sure 
and uh, yeah, incredible experience. And then at the top top of the of the S tier, the most fun in the box is Tales to Amaze, because you get so much in the box. Not be not because, and you get so much in the box. The four fighters are all all very very good, so you can play it uh, against each other. But also this introduces the solo and it introduces co-op. So um, just the, the amount of replayability in this box cannot be beat, and that's why it is number one. If the fighters sucked, it would not be number one. The fighters are really good, and they're really fun, so it's number one. The, so the co-op is really fun, and this I have not played it solo, but solo would be very fun as well. If you play solo games, this is a great set for you. Um, this is the set for you, actually. So there you have it, guys. Best in the box experiences. And there's not been a single chat, so we're not going to have callers. Uh, unless someone calls me in the next two minutes while I'm signing off. Um, if you want to give me feedback, guys, if you want to call, call me on Discord. Um, and uh, I'll let you give me feedback on the list, and maybe you can change my mind. Ota was able to change, me, change my mind on a couple things. Um... But there you go, there you go, guys. Uh, S tier, Tales to Amaze, Battle Legends Volume Two, Genie Houdini, and Sun's Origin, and then the rest of them. Most fun in the box. If I had to place slings and arrows, how could I do that, guys? How could I possibly place it? Oh, I wish I hadn't touched it. Can we not move it? Oh no, oh no, <laughs> I oh no. There's no going back. Uh. All right, guys, most fun in the box. I have no idea. Why would I even touch this? It's definitely S tier. It's definitely the best. Uh, no. Um, you know what, guys? It's going to be a solid just at the bottom for reals. No, I, I can't. I wish I could undo that. Mistakes were made. Uh, I don't want to disrespect slings and arrows, but I don't want to give it too much, like, crazy. Where's a spot that people would be like, how can you even know? We're going to go to the very top. The hype train's real. Slings and arrows, guys. Most fun in the box experience. There you have it. Um, let me save that. So we're gonna call this in the box. Captain Crockpot Unmatched Sets. Seats. We're gonna save that. Cool. Um, I'm going to be doing another stream, uh, shortly after this one, we'll start at probably 9.45, I'll see you guys at 9.45 for the next one, the next one is going to be, what, let's find out what it's going to be, what did I say it was going to be, oh, beginner friendly, so, um, it'll be beginner friendly, because there's, there's definitely a level of, like, this, this, if you're just getting into the game, uh, some sets are going to be pretty tough to tackle, um, and some sets will be much better for you. So we're going to get into that in the next tier list. And thank you guys for watching. And as always, this is your captain signing off. And I will see you guys very soon. Now hear this, now hear this. This is your captain speaking. What a turnout. What happened here was a miracle. The idea was to bring together a group of remarkable people. My friend. I thank you for your support. Couldn't be more proud of you. Get a heart and soul of this team. You and I are a team. Nothing is more important than our friendship. We need you, man. I have you to thank. Couldn't have done it without you. This is for you, buddy. So without further eloquence. Thank you.